What's up, everyone? Gyms are closed, but hopefully we'll be reopening soon. Leading officials are saying get out and be healthy, but how can they do that when their favorite gym is closed? What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Fervent Four. Did you know that only 4% of businesses ever cross the annual million-dollar revenue mark? I'm Zach Miller, author of Anomaly, how to finally stand out from the crowd. And with me today, I have my co-host, Tim Ryan, the lead man at startwheel.org. Thanks for joining us. The Fervent Four is a weekly show every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, dedicated to sharing insights into growing a world-class business, no matter the climate. Today, we're joined with Deshaun Wright, owner of Body by D. We'll have him on in just a moment. But the Fervent Four is powered by the SBDC, which helps local small businesses grow through counseling and resources like this show. If you're interested in learning more on how the SBDC can help you and your business, head to startwheel.org slash weekly. Welcome to the show and thanks for tuning in. Tim, hello. Deshaun, Good hello. Morning. What's going on, man? How y'all doing? What's up, Deshaun? What's up, Tim? What's up, Zach, man? I'm blessed, man. I'm excited Nothing. to be on the show with you all. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So you've been in the fitness world, I don't know, your entire life? Or like, what got you into fitness? Now, well, I've been working out since I was one. No, I'm just playing. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like my dad, my dad got me into um, working out. My dad, my brother. And my mom's been athletic and I'm very fit people. So they kind of got me into it. But a funny story, it took about a uh, senior year in high school for it finally to click for me to finally actually want to be involved and do it because I was totally against doing it because I felt like it was going to make me bulky, hard for me to be an athlete and all this other stuff. But then finally one day it clicked and then we took farm from there. So I just turned 40. So you can imagine. So started about at 18, from 18 to about 40, I've been working out. Yes, sir. So what is that? 22 years old. You're 40 yeah. years old. Um, what, what, when you started working out, were you just doing bodybuilding or what were you kind of getting into at that point? Well, at that point, you know, it's just um, about working out, you know, just um, and that then too, when I kind of first started off, I was doing like um, fitness models and stuff like that. So it's kind of to be a little more leaner and stuff like that. But then from there, I got into bodybuilding because my dad and my brother bodybuilding. And then um, it went from there to be a little more bulky, a little more muscular. And that's how it started. So it started just to be in shape. Then it ended up going into like a little bit of like making a little bit of money from it. And then from there, it went into like want to do bodybuilding shows. The main thing I wanted to get me involved was bodybuilders and my brother, you know, sibling rivalry. My oldest brother was this big bodybuilding champion and I wanted to be better than him. So that's initially how it really, really got me <laughs> fired up into being a bodybuilder. You know how that is with your brother. So um, my brother's name is um, Antoine. So it was always like Antoine's brother. And I ended up going to be from Antoine's brother to now he's like Deshaun's brother. You know what I mean? So it was something that really pushed me and got and pushed me and propelled me was I'm um, the kind of trying to like um, follow my brother's footsteps and 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 do do better than him. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. So Tim is really big into uh, working out every single day. He's he's built this kind of no days off mindset where I don't know. If, I have to say this every episode because I think it's just an amazing stat. But he's basically run at least two miles up to 26.2 in one day for over nice. five years straight, 2,000 plus days. Nice. Like, why is that kind of mindset of no days off, the constant of 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 having to do something physical so important um, to, to, to the world? You know, because I think some people are like five days on, two days off, you know, something like that. But like the no days off mindset I can just hear it in your voice already. Like it, it seems like something that you want to get behind and, and do get behind. Like, why is something like that so important to you? To me, Zach, or to is this to, to Deshaun? Or to both of you, because it was to Deshaun too, but he, he dropped for now, but he'll come back. What yeah, do you think? I mean, at least him? I mean, for me, it's it's one of those things I want to prove uh, to myself and to my kids that if you want something, you have to work for it little by little each day, no matter how small the improvement might be you have to have the discipline to do it. And you can't achieve those big things without doing the small things first. True, and yeah, that's true. Um, I feel like, you know, the no days mentality has just come off with just, and that's something you gotta work out every day, but it's the mindset of being like, you know, doing something productive, something positive, that's gonna help with your mental state. And, uh, and being, you know, exercising, being vigorous, all those things help mentally, help clear your mind mentally, help you um, 
have better resolution skills. I can tell how many people come and be like, after a good workout, they can handle situations a lot better. Like their moves a lot better. So that's the product of, you know, doing something that's going to contribute to you being a better person. Um, the whole no days off mentality, I say, but like that right there. You know what I mean? And a fitness is, is about your, it's about what you eat too. It's about what you put in your body. So it's so much bigger part of what you put in your body. And that's definitely no days off because what you put in is what you put out. Was what you get out. That's what I say. So your body is your your temple. It's your it's your BMW. It's your Bentley. You got to take care of that. And you want to put the proper fuel in that. So that's what you want to do. So like I said, the no days off mentality to me um, is when I tell people it's just the part of doing something that's going to make you healthy, that's going to make you happy, and it's going to make you a better person when I consider the no days off mentality. So as a bodybuilder, I do have days off. And I encourage clients just because of rest, but the whole mindset thing, like what Tim's saying is, is a perfect thing. When all this started happening and gyms closing, mm -hmm. people's New Year's resolutions going out the wayside and everything. And it to me, it was like, well, hold on. Like, why are we changing our our destinations? Why are we changing our mindset to be like, hey, well, well now all of a sudden someone told me I have to stay at home. That means I I I can't work out anymore or I can't eat healthy. Uh -huh. By the way, go to the grocery store. All the healthy food is available, right? It's, yeah, ri it's ridiculous true. how much produce is available. True. And if people true. are watching this and start eating all the produce, good for you. I'm happy that you're doing it, but save some for the three of us because we want it to, right? <laughs> but it's, 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 it's like some somewhere in their head, they're just like, okay, cool. I can pause this right now. And I think what you're mm -hmm. saying is, that's not the attitude to have. The attitude to have is like, hey, like you have to continue this good, good times, bad times. And how do you explain that to your customers that might not have that habit built into their mindset yet where they got to start building it up? Um, what I tell people, um, it's a famous quote. I love it from legendary coach John Wooden said, don't let what you cannot do stop you from what you can do. It's always something that we can do. Uh, just because somebody said you can't do this, we, can't, we tend to focus focus on that and that's it like man what that's it i can't do nothing no think about the other things you can do when they, everything came out with the covid 19 they, they said you can't go to gyms for some reason so many people put that as uh we can't work out like no they encourage exercise it just means you just have to change your vehicle up a little bit just because you can't do it inside of the gym don't mean you still cannot exercise so then so many people just heard gyms close and they were like but exercise is important you still can exercise just exercise outside for right now and just kind of change your mindset of what you got to do so what we've been doing uh myself personally i've been doing like a lot of um p training people at my house uh we've been doing um outdoor activities i've been putting out uh, dvds to show people what they could do for in-home workouts with body weight exercises and so many other different things and it's going so so well so that's what i've been doing to really push people and show that hey don't let what you cannot do stop you from what you can do even other gym owners and stuff out there i'm like man this is um, yeah, your gyms is closed down, but it's find other ways to generate streams of income to when it, you were able to come back, your gym is still there. So that's so important. That mentality of don't just focus on the can't, don't just focus on the elephant in the room. Find out what you can do during times when you can't do something and make it happen. Well, and I think a lot in the fitness world, a lot of people are trying to establish um habits for people first, right? They, they all want the very specific routine to go through when they don't have the, the foundation set first. And I think the foundations are incredibly important for times like this, right? Like if your foundations are set in place, that means when something like this happens, you haven't, it, it shouldn't slow you down Mm -hmm. So how do you establish, and I, and I love the parallels between, I think Tim does too, like the foundations between fitness and business because they are so similar. So how does someone start to create foundations first before, you know, they, they start focusing on something that takes years, you know, in the making. So, you know, a lot of people talk about macros, right? Macros probably mm -hmm. aren't the first thing that people need to do there. There's mm -hmm. other things before that. Maybe I'm mm -hmm. wrong, but what can someone do to really establish kind of foundations first so that when stuff does get hard, they're already in a winning, in, in, a, in a winning mode? Uh, like I said, you got to create habits. Uh, that's the key of creating habits is the, is the key to everything. Because what happens is when you create habits, no matter what you have going on in your life, because it's a habit, you're going to continue with those things. And that's going to continue pushing you to propel and be successful. 
So if you don't have those habits, when when life knocks us down, that's how we end up stopping. You know what I mean? Because it's not a habit. We was doing some out of um, just because um, we did it. We did it because it was casual. But when something's not casual, like you're running, Tim, it's a part of you. You're going to do it no matter what. You know what I mean? Right. Because it's such a big part of you. You know what I mean? Like when we eat, we eat because it's a part of us. So you have to create habits. I tell people, first thing, create habits. But when you create habits, some people, we start off when to create these elaborate habits. I'm like, yo, you can't go from zero to 60 overnight. You know what I mean? Take time. Let's build it up a little bit. Because when you start creating like habits that's unattainable for you at the moment, it knocks your self-confidence and, and you end up not moving forward. So when you establish a, a habit that you can accomplish and accomplish on a regular basis, it allows you to like build confidence and know I can take a step further to something else. And then that goal becomes attainable. That goal becomes attainable. And, and next thing you know, you are attaining the unattainable because you have to take those small steps. So I tell people, so start with a, a small foundation. Get your new, write down your goals. What are you trying to accomplish with your fitness? I'll tell people, write down four or five goals. What are you trying to accomplish with your fitness? Look at that. If your first week, you're like, hey, I want to be able to work out three days a week. Start with that. You know what I mean? Some people, they start off, I'm going to work out every day. I'm like, don't do that. You know what I mean? You're setting yourself up for failure. I'm like, because if something's going to happen, you not come every day and it's going to throw you off your track. But if you set yourself up, like, I'm going to work out three days, four days. You know what I mean? And there's something to start off like that. And then you can build upon that. That's what it's about. Foundation is about building, right? The house is not built in one day. People want to build a house in one day. When you build a foundation for a house, it's steps. It's steps. So it's the same thing with your fitness. Build right. those steps. It's the same thing, anything in business or whatever. It's a step. And then you have the house. You know what I mean? So small you can't build a house in one day. House. That's it. But so many people want to do it. And that's what sets yeah. them up for failure. And that's, that keeps them from moving forward. Makes you so much stronger, right? too. That's it. Makes you more so stronger. So that's why I tell people those small steps. And then we start from there and then we build and then we build. And next thing you know, and you open the door to that new house. You know what I mean? So let's go. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm curious now, like during all this with the, with everything that's going on with doors closed uh, at the gym, have, uh, what have your members started doing to uh, hold each other accountable? Are they chatting amongst themselves? Uh, what are they doing to stay motivated? Uh, we are, uh, we're, uh, we're blessed. Uh, I'm blessed. I'm not just saying that because it's, you know, uh, my gym, but we have the best members. I mean, we have the best members in the world, like in both locations. Our people are, uh, the whole thing about BBD movement, we always say don't join a gym, join a movement. Because it's bigger than just about working out, building biceps or, you know what I mean, or having a six pack with us. It's about community. It's about how we uplift each other. It's how we can be a better person and aspirations and inspire each other to go out to different goals. So we've been definitely holding each other accountable. We've been keeping accountable on social media, through messages, through texting, keeping everybody informed, through emails, what we have going on. Still been training a lot of people. Um, my other my other trainers are training other people too. So we're definitely staying accountable. Um, we have a boot camp classes because now we can train people outside. We're getting ready for that. So people are staying accountable, getting crazy goals, looking good, posting pictures. People are like, wow, man, everyone's looking so good, even though I'm doing this time where most people are not doing anything. And so we're that's how we keep it accountable with everything that's going on. We yeah, keep it used, pushing. It used to be the freshman 15. Now it's the COVID-19, right? Where people are going to be the COVID-19. That it is. That it is. <laughs> we try to keep that off people, man. We're definitely keeping that off people for sure. <laughs> but it's just the whole key. We created those habits. We have habits and making people stay accountable on the online training, people holding accountable. We have weigh-ins. All that stuff, that accountability make people want to keep pushing forward because they know they got to hop on that scale. You don't want to hop on that scale and they'll say something you don't want it to say. You know what I mean? So. How do you, how does one not just and I and I believe you've done this so this is why I'm asking this question how does someone not just say build a movement how does someone say how does someone not just say build a community but actually get into the weeds and build the community because I think a lot of people use that word a lot of people say build a movement mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's very difficult for someone to actually obtain and to have stickers on on cars, like Tim was saying, to have people, you know, be a part of a movement. Like, what are some of the strategies that you've uh, deployed over the years that actually helped build what you set out to do? Well, uh, uh, go back to the first thing I set goals. You know what I mean? I was like, okay, what am I looking to achieve? Uh, when I first came off, starting off Body by D, what was my mission to do? My mission was to be a big part of the community, a staple in the community, and how, use this vehicle to help change lives all right so that was my first part like that how can i do that not only physically 
but mentally, how can I do that? So we started off like that. Then to start off as being a leader, people like transparency. So they like to know your story and to come from the humble beginnings I come from and to not let that stop me from attaining things and allow other people to have belief in me and let alone allow me to get them to believe in themselves. You know what I mean? So all that comes, um, leadership. Leadership is a key to everything. So that comes with that. I had to learn how to become a better leader. And I, I read a lot, studied a lot. I got a lot of mentors that helped me become a better leader. And now that becoming personable with people and realizing that people are people and people are going to make mistakes and, and people are going to fall off the wagon. But to really learn people, people forget it's a personal in front of that word trainer. You know what I mean? And that personal is because you, you're you learning about that person. You, you know, you're, you're learning about... Um, the more you know about a person, the more you can get a person to believe in themselves. That's the key. My job is to get you to believe in yourself. And once you believe in yourself, you believe in something normally that's bigger than you. And that's a movement, right? And that's a movement. And those are the people that move the movement. I don't move the movement. You know what I mean? I'm just the figure of the, the figurehead of the movement, but I don't move it. I was telling people, it's not me. It's all those people who behind me who move the movement. They believe in what we do here and what we build and giving back. You just got to have a purpose. A movement should be, what's your purpose? What are you trying to accomplish with your movement? And like I said, I stated by community, giving back, showing people they could be anything and do anything and don't let your beginning, your story don't have to end the way it started. You know what I mean? You, you have the ability, you still writing that pen. As long as you're alive, you still writing those chapters, Tim. You know? That's right. So, so what's, uh, what's your focus going to be as uh, the opening starts taking place? Are you going to be focused on the members that you currently have? Or are you going to see an increase of membership because they're one of the leading uh, factors for death they're saying is obesity. Uh, mm -hmm. As new members started approaching you because they're like, Hey man, that's, I got to get my life on track. You know, where, where are things going with you right now? Well, I like, I mean, already, cause I'm, I've been trained. Normally I wouldn't train people who are not members, but I've been through this going on. I've been starting training people who were not members of body by day and it's going to shoot extremely well. So I'm going to continue to do that to get them, you know, because we are getting that. But uh, at Body by D right now, our members are what's going to come first because when we do start opening back up, um, obviously with the COVID-19, it's going to be restrictions to keep everybody safe. So we have to make sure that we have quite a few members. We got to make sure that they could come utilize the equipment because they have stayed with us. Uh, I mean, so many gyms are, are having to shut down and close down doing this because people, they don't want to pay during this time. You know what I mean? So we're honored and blessed that our people are still staying with us through this time and realize they want us to be back open when the time comes back, you know what I mean, for us to open back up and we're gonna take care of them for that support that they have given us during this time because we are blessed to have that. So we're gonna make sure we're already sanitizing everything, still been cleaning everything every day while we're not in there, um, having professional company come in and sanitize everything too. Uh, we're gonna do the halo thing to help kill all the virus and everything to make sure. So we, our main thing is the people's safety. We want people to come in and feel comfortable enough to be able to work out. And once we get that comfort level and that confidence that everything is going to be okay, then we're going to focus on the other part of maybe adding adding more and more people. But right now, that's my main focus right now. That's our main focus is to get our members who, who have stood with us through these since March until now to like make sure they're they're feeling confident and safe and know that we're not going to kick their kick them out to add more people because of the, we have to have a certain amount of people there. You know what I mean? So we're not going to mm -hmm. do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. it, it is interesting to kind of piggyback off of what Tim was saying, where it appears that there might be trends in this, that people who are unhealthy are threatened most by this. Mm -hmm. Has there been any marketing push that you've done or you've seen others uh, push out directly communicating to that on how important it is to be healthy during times like this or forever so that your body is more prepared for something like this. I mean, you know, they, what is it, you know, having a stronger immune system uh, mm -hmm. it has been better. So, so what are you doing to kind of promote that directly, that kind of language around it? And is there, a, is there any kind of other messages that you've seen other brands participate in that has really pushed that kind of stuff because right now it seems like a lot of the messaging has been around the frontline workers obviously mm -hmm. they, they, you know i understand that but like from a marketing perspective of hey be healthy and you will have a better life like is is there messages around that you're participating in with that or we're seeing other brands really do well with that um you know right i mean right now um just the fact is um 
always telling people that, you know, obesity and being in shape gives you a better chance to fight off anything, just a better quality of life. So that message is um, staying strong throughout all of this. So we are definitely pushing that to tell people, you know, the, um, the healthier you are, um, the less likely or the more prone you can, if you do contract the virus, that you're more prone to be able to recover from it. You know, it's still it's definitely attacking people who are still healthy, but it gives you a better fighting chance. So we definitely are promoting that for the people to let them know, like, hey, when we get back going, let's get that going. Or even the people that I'm, I'm training now, um, that's why they want to keep going because they, like I said, I picked up people who have been, haven't worked out in like months or even years, but because of what's happening, they realize that the health is very important. So they made a pair of mind and taking the time out to prioritize themselves to realize that they need to get focused and worked out. So it's a lot of other like gyms and brands are doing that too. It's just showing people that, Hey, you got to keep going, keep moving. Um, you have to keep working out because this is something very important. And not only to the physical state, Zach, but to the mental state. You know, I mean, this is a, a trying time for so many people. And if your mental state is messed up, and then that's going to, I mean, what, what does stress do to your body? We already know what stress does to your body. It weakens your immune system and everything. So that's why staying healthy is such a big deal right now. So even if, if you're not in the gyms, you know, because only people don't realize that people are going to push to the, I don't really feel like people are going to really come push to the gym at first starting off because people still going to be a little leery about the virus. You know what I mean? So you got to realize that um, because the gym is a, a, a hotbed for that stuff to happen. So you got to build the consumer's um, confidence back up. But you need to promote right now still exercise and healthy living. And we're trying to promote that right now. You you have a lot of, it's it appears, restaurant owners who are very ticked mm -hmm. off at mm -hmm. this situation. Are you see, uh, not being able to ticked off, not being able to open when other big brands potentially are um, being open, right? I've, I've seen people say like, how, how can Home Depot be open, but I can't be open and I own this mm -hmm. restaurant. Are you seeing, two part question, are you seeing that in the gym world too? And like, what is, the, what is your reaction to stuff like that when you see stuff being dictated by the government where you can't be open, but other big brands are like, how do you, how do you handle that from a, from a mental capacity when, you know, it seems like it's, it's very difficult to, to, to stay in business when all these big brands are able to, to stay open. Um, how I feel about that. I'm, I'm, I'm how I feel about that. I'm probably going to be in the, the popular brand with so many people that when the, everything first happened, obviously it was a shock. It was like, wow, man. I was like, you know, when, for somebody to tell you that your business is like non-essential, it was definitely like, wow. You know what I mean? It was a little, it was a hit. But I, I'm blessed, you know, with um my girlfriend and so many other good people who supported me. And they helped me get myself back on and clear my mind once I got out of that state. So to go, and then once I got out of that state, I realized, okay, what, what do I have to do um, to keep everything going, to keep the gym going, to keep the brand going? What can I do? So... Once I really thought about it, if we think about they never said, I, I wish more gym owners were like, I know we, they're upset and frustrated, but if, if you keep looking at the elephant in the room, the fact that you can't open right now, you're missing the point of like what this pandemic, what you can learn from this right now, because this, this could happen again. This could come back. So it's like, what things can we do to be prepared if this does happen? What other streams of income can you do to bring in if this does happen? That's why I, went more to the virtual, the online, the in-house, and so many any other things. I changed my focus on what I can control. And I see so many people now still complaining about, well, Home Depot open and this open. But if you be real, I'm going to be honest. Okay, gyms are not essential. You know what I mean? If you actually, because you can go work out outside. It's not, we like to work out at gyms. But I realized, I had to come to the point of that. My barbershop, those are things that are not essential because those things you can do on your own. You see what I'm saying? You can't go, you, you can't, you can't, you got to go to Walmart and get food and stuff like that. So those certain things, like I get it. Like I can get like why those places are open and they do what they do because you got to realize that's essential. Certain things you, I can't, most people can't grow their own food. You know what I mean? So they need places to go get their food. They got to build their houses. They got to do all that kind of stuff. So it's something that the government's done that I would have done differently if I was in that position. You know what I mean? As far as the lockdown and stuff like that. But I get a lot of that, but that part I can't control. Only that I can focus on instead of complaining about why this is open and why that's open. Like I have plenty of friends who are in the restaurant business. And, um, you know what I mean? And they're going to do takeout and delivery. And I'm glad for them. But I'm like, you know, I'm closed. But that's not their fault. You know what I mean? But my point is all I can do is focus on what I 
what I can do instead of like worrying about what the government telling me I can't do. You know what I mean? That's that's how I look at it. And that's how I try to tell other people who I mentor in the gym world. Be like, man, focus on that because you know what? You can't control that. You keep fussing about, it's been March. Like it started in March and we're in May and you're still complaining about the same thing. I'm like, come on, like who fault is that? To me, that's not, that's nobody fault but yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah, one thing that, 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 that we've talked about over and over again is, that resonates so much. So a lot of people that are listening right now, yeah, you know, they're in a yeah. in a state of panic because they don't know what they they just don't know what to do. I mean, they're almost paralyzed mm -hmm. in the sense of my gosh, well, yeah, you know, I don't know, I don't even know where to start. And the thing that uh, that stands out to me, what you've been able to do so well, and you even said the words, is that you built the foundation, and that you are in a much different spot now because mm -hmm. you have a relationship with each of the members of your mm -hmm. movement mm -hmm. and that so looking at some of the reviews that people uh, have, have placed on uh, yelp or facebook you know they're like deshaun he greets me by name every single time that i see him and you have built that community so you've put that foundation in place so now when we're in a time like this you know, you, you have a lot more, nothing has been transactional. Everything you have, the relationship is in place and that gives you some more leeway to mm -hmm. face mm -hmm. something like this. So, uh, so to the, the listeners out there, I mean, this is something that you can learn from is to establish those relationships and do the things that you have to do so that you can, you, you have that relationship. And so much so that you were, what the uh, 2019 small business of the year for uh, for your county? So uh, I mean, you have so many things in place. So so kudos to you, John. I appreciate Tim. And like I said, man, I know it's a um. What I'm saying is, a, it's a, it's, a, it's a, I, I'm a person who come from nothing. You know what I mean? Like I started with nothing. I've been homeless like numerous times. So I know how it is that I have nothing. So I guess I just my mindset is that like um. I just got to go grind. You know what I mean? I just got to go grind and go get it. And that's why I kind of still in our members, I'm like, again, we just, just focus to me. I like, you need to focus on what you can control. You know what I mean? What you can control. And then, um, and then you go from there because the whole, I have learned, I've become more creative and opened up different, more streams of income because of this situation. I'm more person to try to look at the positive or something. And I know people are struggling there. But my point is that like, we try to focus on the positive and try to be like, what can you, what can you do? Because this can happen again. Or what if you have a couple of bad months in business? You know what I mean? I'm just like, your stage, mm -hmm. you need to figure out to make yourself more successful so you can give the members and the people what they need to have. That's the whole point I've been trying to preach to people. That's just, that's just me. That's just my mentality or anything in life. You know what I mean? So. Absolutely. And, and, you know, and I have a little bit more insight into your backstory than, than the average person. <laughs> so that was one of the things that I was going to comment to you is that uh, facing something like this, uh, this is almost like easy street for you because you started with nothing, you know? So this is just a little, a small bump in the road. This is, this is a small bump in the road. It just like, I mean, I've been prepared for, for stuff like this. You know what I mean? I know, like I said, everybody's different and what they go through, but it's just like, that's just like my mentality. And you know, just what I try to instill in people. It just is um. It's a small bump in the road and just, I mean, like when I'm talking about starting for nothing, like for nothing, nothing, you know what I mean? It's just been like hard work and grind. And so just keep going after it. That's the only reason I, I've been where I am today that I put my head down, uh, believed in God and just stay focused on what I can't control. You know what I mean? And just like, but I can't, I got to leave in his hand and just keep pushing. You know what I mean? So I just think that just, that's another thing called undue stress too. Just focus on what you can't, you know, what you can't control or not. Cause sooner or later, man, the gyms are, and it kind of like, um, with the phase, we're here just a little bit. I'm hoping, hoping I'm not going off too bit, but with the phase two opening that they're going to have with the gyms, it's actually, in my opinion, it's going to be better for the gyms because it's less restrictions. You see what I'm saying? Like phase one would have been like a ton of restrictions. And now at phase two, it's going to be 50% capacity, a lot more stuff that we can do, you know what I mean, to keep everything going for everybody. It's going to be an easier transition than it would have been with phase one. You know what I mean? Phase one would have been really really, really a lot of restrictions, a ton of restrictions. God, do I even a lot of restaurants, um, my friends, they, they don't even want to do the outdoor capacity and stuff like that because it doesn't even suit their, you know what I mean? But that's what they can do for phase one. But they're waiting for phase two so they have more stuff to do and way less restrictions, you know what I mean? So, like I said, I know you, people want to be open and this like that, but if you look at the bigger picture, it's just like, it's a lot you have to deal with right now if you just kind of be a little more patient then it might be, a, it's going to be a lot less for us to deal with. You know, if the, everything goes as suited. If it goes to suit it. Yeah. Hey Tim, I got to ask you a question. What yeah. what thing have you learned about yourself through this whole? Um, well
what thing have you learned about yourself through this um the stay in order? What have you learned more well, about I, yourself I, doing this? I don't know. I mean, one of the things that I'm like you in the sense of nothing nothing will uh, set me off quicker than when people focus on the things that they can't do. It's always about let's focus on what can be done. So uh, you're you're preaching to me hard when uh, you're talking about when when you share that same sentiment. So uh, to me, it's it's I'm busier now than I've ever been, and it's a matter of of going out and getting after it. And me um, too. <laughs> this is you know when when there's uncertainty, there's there's a ton of opportunity. So this is the time to. Uh, it's like with me when I'm running a when I'm running a race, and if I'm mile 22 in a marathon, and I see someone that's tired in front of me, that just motivates me, and I will just pick up my pace and I will I will chase that person down, and I pick everybody off one at a time. So, uh, and right now there's this word just in a time that there's so many, uh, so not necessarily weak, but people are they're fatigued and they're tired, mm-hmm. and that just motivates me to come after it stronger. How do you decide that? yourself where it's like, okay, I'm now being allowed to be reopened. How do I as a business owner decide then, do I feel that it's the right time to reopen? How do you make that decision yourself? That's a, that's a very good question. That's something I've been kind of um, debating with myself back and forth, but I, I feel like um, I'm doing something, doing, we're doing things to make sure that uh, when that day comes that we're taking care of our people, you know what I mean? We're taking care of our people. But I feel like um, if we've been listening to the government officials this long and the health officials saying we should be closed or when they say we should be open, I think we need it. It's the same mindset. You know what I mean? Kind of like we got to take what they say saying we it's, t- it's okay to be open as long as we follow these protocols. So that's how I'm going to look at it. If I've been following them, their advice the whole time of being closed, I'm going to follow their whole advice about the same time as um, when we are allowed to reopen. So that's what I've been telling people. So, that's what I'm going to do. But um, we can do everything in our power to make sure uh, we follow the protocols and keep everything clean and, and make sure everyone's safe. Because, I mean, when you work out, you work out to be healthy, right? That's the whole purpose of working out to be healthy. And if you, you go into a situation that's going to make you unhealthy, like that doesn't make sense to me. You know what I mean? So let's, um, you know, we're going to make sure that everybody's healthy and, and, and staying safe through all of this. Yes, sir. Uh, Ville has a couple more questions for you. Basically, does he think that when you do reopen back up, uh, if he expects to be at capacity when the 50% takes place, or does he expect people to not show up, right? To, to not come in. And then does he expect to be at capacity when the 50% does take place? Like, do you think that people are going to show up or do you think you're going to have like a very small amount of people in, in, in the gym? I, I, honestly, honestly, Zach, um, George, good question, man. I feel like it's, I mean, everybody's saying, you know, gym's over, gym's over. I don't think it's going to be as many people as people think. Just me me personally. You know what I mean? Just me personally. I think people are going to be – depends on your population, too. If you have an older crowd of people who come to your gym, I'm pretty sure that it's not going to be – you know what I mean? Um, certain gyms who tell it to that, they're, they're not going to be there yet. But um, I feel like we're going – we're definitely going to get a good amount that, that comes in. And, um, you know what I mean? Um, probably will be close to around that 50% capacity, you know what I mean, when we come in started. But um, I feel like a lot of places – it won't be every place. That'll be like that. But then another thing too, I think people realize in phase one, if fa- if the gyms were to open in phase one, the big box gyms, like they couldn't have opened because they couldn't do 10 and under. You know what I mean? It wouldn't make sense for them to be 10 and under. They're too big. You know what I mean? So their people would end up coming to the gyms like my gym and other gym trying to get workouts. And then they would have took away from the people who are already members. You know what I mean? It would have been a big, it's a big thing that people are not looking at. That's why I was like, I'm ready. I like phase two because now they can open and then everybody can be open and kind of work out. You know what I mean? What, what's something about you during all of this that you've really changed? Like you personally, like, is, is there a new foundation that you've set throughout all of this? I mean, definitely, definitely. I found out, excuse me, definitely. Um, one of the things I found out, Zach, about myself, it, it was like, man, I realized that I really, the slowdown made me realize like what, what things that I'm really chasing. You know what I mean? Like uh, the things I thought I was really chasing and what was really important, not as important as I thought it was. You know what I mean? So it made me really focus a lot more on family and just enjoying family and, and making sure they're good. And I, I've been having a ball, man. The relationship uh, with my family has gotten that much closer. And it just, it's been a good time. It's been a good time for me to reset and think and um, reevaluate some goals and in life um, because of the slowdown. You know, when you're constantly going, 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 you're just thinking like that's what you're supposed to be doing. But um, 
it's like, you know, I still have my goals and my aspirations, but it kind of just, it tilted a little bit to more making sure that I'm solid footed with my family. Cause at the end of the day, that's, I mean, this, this made me realize at the end of the day, when somebody could come to you and tell you, you could close your business down, you have to close your business down. It's like, really like, you know, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Really? What is it really about? That's, that's powerful. That was powerful to me that somebody could be like, I know this is your business, but guess what? We have to close it down. I was like, man, what, what am I really doing? You know what I mean? Like, what am I really doing? So that's how that would change me, Zach, to real. And I need to get a non-essential. I'm definitely going to get a essential business. I would definitely go <laughs> get a business that's essential. So if this happens again, <laughs> this, I, that's my main thing. I promise you that I will have an essential business. That's just what never happened to me again. But but um, it made me realize those things. It made me realize those things. Sure. I mean, I, I personally, I would say that you do have an essential business. I understand that. True. The, um, True. I understand that the boundaries. I feel that way too. Place. I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I just find it really interesting that like health of this isn't the health of people isn't coming out of this more, right? And so that that's something that I hope that as the coming weeks, months, and years come through out of this is that more people start to live a more healthy lifestyle and yeah, are definitely. not are not straight up manipulated by marketing jargon that's telling them that, hey, it's okay. As someone who has lived that life, right? I mean, like, you know, even just a few years ago, I was severely overweight, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, have completely adopted a healthy mindset, sure. like, and, and lifestyle, like, it- You it, look good too, Zach. You look good, man. Appreciate it, you know? I got that body by Z, you know, the body by Z. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I mean, I just, like, it, it it takes time. It takes effort into putting those things. And I think like we haven't even, we don't even recognize many times how we're manipulated into just be severely unhappy and, or to be unhealthy. And it, and, it, and it's, it's really interesting to me how we can control that, but how quickly we can be um, marketed towards and pulled into some of these other places that are, are just not good, good for the health of, of everyone. And so I hope that people that, you know, during these times like this, that they recognize like, hey, I, I don't need to go get that happy meal or, you know, mm -hmm. extra value meal. It might taste great. It might be great. But like, that's probably not the best thing for us to be consuming. And it's cheap and it's easy, but that's not healthy. And and I hope that more people will start to push that type of world out there, because I do think that it seem it, it appears that, you know, you're healthier you have a healthier immune system, you eat healthier, you're going to be able to get through this a lot easier than if not. And I hope that more people will start to um, start recognizing and living that lifestyle. So, Health is wealth, man. And health is no matter what else. If you don't have your health, nothing else matters. You know what I mean? So definitely health is definitely wealth. You can, um, you know, you can get over being broke, you get over so many things, but you get that terminal illness and that's something, it's a whole different battle. You know what I mean? So that is definitely so true. Zach, what things have you learned about yourself, man, during this? I have a printer now. That's the biggest difference in my house. No, I mean, like, look, I mean, I, I, I at the beginning of all of this, I, I I think I selfishly would say things to people like, well, why aren't you, why don't you have your foundations set, right? I've been working really, really hard to have those foundations set. And I recognize that, hey, like, I have been working on that and they are really, really strong so that, you know, times like this, I'm still working out every day times where it's raining and it's windy. I'm still working out. Right. The four walls don't matter. The mindset and the foundations are what matters. And and I had been working on that anyway. Wait. I've been working on that stuff anyway. I think it's just, it's just that it's been reinforced during stuff like this. And I think that's, what's really valuable. And that's why when all this stuff happened, I said, to people like, well, what are you doing when things are good? Because that's what's that's how you know when when things go bad, or the world is is you know in a in a tailspin, and you can look at stuff and you're like, hmm, I still want to work out, I still want to do these things, right? Like I still want to eat this kind of way. Like that's how you know those foundations are good. And I think it's it's something that I I think as a business owner, it's really easy to to not think about those things, but then it's like, well, how much of this is actually affecting you? And so I think it's something I've been working on for years. And I just think that, um, you know, being asked a question like that, it just makes you realize and reflect back and be like, all right, like you have been doing a good sure. job with this. And I have a printer at my house now, which is mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. That is true. And like you said, it's the whole, 
which is everything. Now you just need a barber like uh, Deshaun has. Like it's that mindset, man. It's the mindset. It's not the. I told you, man. I got the mobile barber for you. Definitely need one of those. <laughs> nah, I'm going. I'm going full on. Like, what do they say, Revenant or something? I'm just trying to grow this out. I'm gonna grow the grow the crazy beard. It'll be wild. D, I got a question for you. Uh, one of the things that I respect about you is, uh, you know, <laughs> it is, uh, but it's just like the mindset of being like, um, the mindset, that's the key to this all, man. The mindset, don't good, man. you're going to be good. So, so true. D, I got a question for you. Uh, one of the things that I respect about you, man, is, is it you, you come across as you're not afraid to fail. So what's your, what, what's your thought process on, on failure? Uh, well, I mean, it's a part of success. I mean, it's just think about it as a kid, you know what I mean? When, or, or when you have your child and your, your child falls down when it's trying to learn to walk, what's the first thing you do? Get back up, keep going, right? That's what we that's tell right. them. We don't tell them to stay down. We pick them back up and be like, keep going. You can do this. I mean, that's what we, as it's, it's funny as um, when people are kids, we, we embrace failure for them, but in some kind of ways we get older, we, we lose that. You know what I mean? It's yep. all about how, as we always teach our kids when we're younger, go for shoot for the shoot for the stars, go for everything you want. That's right. You know what I mean? So you so so what you struck out in your baseball game. So what you missed that shot. You know what I mean? Right. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. But as we get older and when life hits us, we get and we hang around more people who life is beating them up, we tend to see we tend to get away from that mindset. You know what I mean? Right. One of the things I learned, um, I got this from Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold loved hanging around kids. The reason he loved hanging around kids, because kids are what? They, life hasn't beaten them up enough. You know what I mean? They're happy about life. They're excited about life. So they make you think, like, I want to do, I can still be a big kid and do all these things instead of all these dreams. So I surround, I love kids, man. I stay around kids. They keep me positive. They keep me rejuvenated. They keep me going. I love visiting historical places. I keep myself inspired. So when I do have those failures and stuff like that, it doesn't, it doesn't get to me because I stay inspired. And I know, like, failure is part of life. It just mean I, it just mean I try something. And the next time I try, guess what? I'm going to get it because I'm going to do it better. You know what I mean? Right. And that's uh, one of the things that, uh, I'm sorry, Zach, is that we need to embrace failure more and we, we need to celebrate failure, especially when it comes to the gym. It's like, okay, so you weren't able to bench press 250 pounds, but you got 245 pounds and that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. And, that, and, that's, what, and that's the way I do clients. I'm like, you remember how you started? That's why I always tell people, like, I'll, I'll take them to an evaluation to show how they started. And then later down the road, they'd be like, man, I remember I couldn't do this. I can do five push-ups. Now I'm doing 15. That's progress. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like your, 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 your progress, you're seeing those steps and um, you know, like failure is totally part of it. I mean, you work out for failure to failure is one of the things you do, you know what I mean? So it's all part of that process. So like failure and think about, think about this, like scientists, I always tell people this about failure. Do we, do we applaud them for the million times they didn't get a vaccine or do we applaud them for the one time they find a cure for something? We always know for that one cure. We don't know for everything else that they failed. So like, man, they fail way more than they want. So, what are we really celebrating? You know what I mean? So you gotta look at it like that. Well, fail to me, failure is only failing if you don't learn from it. That's right. right? If you keep Boom. doing the same thing over and over again, that's to me, that's on you. Then that is failure. That's but you. that's that's that not failure. learning. Yeah, that's it. So, so if if someone is uh, watching, and we'll wrap up with this, if someone's watching and they are kind of on the fence and they're starting to believe in kind of the, some of the things that we're talking about but uh -huh. they don't know how to get started in kind of a, a healthier lifestyle. What would you mm -hmm. say to them if they, if they walked into your doors or you're talking to them on the phone? Like if someone's thinking like, eh, like what, how do you, how do you motivate them and get them to start thinking about always, this world differently? The, the always I want to do, I'd be like, what, uh, what, when people first come in and want to talk about working out, I'd be like, what's your why? Why do you do this? Not, you know, because you want, you know, bigger biceps or you, you know, or girls want to, uh, a better butt or you know what I mean you want to lose your stomach no 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 that's all like part of the process but what's your what's your real why because your why is going to create the how and when times get tough that's going to keep you moving because your real why so you get people be like you know what I want to be there for my kids I want to get off this blood pressure medicine I want to take care I mean I have um, obesity runs in my family or I have all these other things that run in my family I don't want to be like my dad when he was this age all of those things are real concrete reasons and deep reasons they're going to push somebody, you know what I mean? On the days they don't want to work out, the days they went off their diet and they got to bounce back because I always come back like, what's 
So why? Your why told me, you said you want to see your daughter get married. What's your why? And that, that you know, that hit somebody. Like, oh, wow, I need to like, yeah, I need to lock in and get refocused. Other than just, you know what I mean? Hey, I, I want to I want to get a six pack. You know what I mean? So I always okay. find out why. Because your why creates the how. And once you get that, then the rest take care of itself. That's what I do, Zach. I always sit people down and talk to them first about what's their reason for wanting to do this. And everybody comes out with the, the same lose weight, gain muscle. And then I hit them, now, what's your real reason? And then you, their whole body changes because they're like, nobody ever asked them that. You know what I mean? Like, what's your real reason? And then they tell me something deep. And they're like, that's what we're going to focus on. Because the other parts is byproducts of that. You know, like we go in business to make money. We know that. That's a that's a byproduct of going to business. But what's what are you really going to business for? What do you really want to do? What do you want your business to do? And then everything else is a byproduct. So it's the same thing. Yeah, another parallelism parallelism to uh, business. I mean, everybody wants to uh, start a business because they want to make money. And before I'll spend a minute with anybody, I want to know what your why is. Because the first sure. time that uh, you don't make payroll for yourself and you don't get paid, I know you're gonna you're out. And I and I'm not going to waste time on someone who's not in it for the long haul. So true, bro. So true. It's like anything else. You know what I'm saying. You know? To 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 piggyback off that, Connor Swain says, Deshaun, what was your why? Why did you want to get into all this? Uh, my why was my kids. You know what I mean? That was my why. My why was my kids, and it still is to this day. Uh, my why was my kids and to make a difference. I remember like um, growing up, people asking what I wanted to do. I'm like, I just want to make a difference. That really was my words. I really want to make a difference. I didn't know how I was going to do that, but I wanted to make a difference. And this is my vehicle. This is my vehicle to make that difference with people and as a, let me do other things in life because that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm making a difference. You know what I mean? So my why is a guy, I know, I know we got to go, but a guy, um, a good friend of mine, like I was busy chasing, chasing stuff. I'm chasing my dreams. And he said, Deshaun, he said, in the day, if you don't have nothing to show for what you've been sacrificing with your kids, the time and them not seeing stuff, he said, they're going to like not like you when you get older because you took so much time for them and you have nothing to show for it. So that made me bust my butt that much harder so they could see all the sacrifices of me being like, I can't come to this, I can't come to that because now they see it. They ask tangible. And it's something they're proud of. And now they understand why I was doing what I was doing to help them have a better life in the long run. You know what I mean? So that's my why right there. Good question, Connor. Thank you. Love it. Appreciate you being with us today. If you guys are looking to work out, definitely want to be thinking and about Deshaun's uh, mindset. Those are biceps that um, are pretty large. Um, I've never said that before in a sentence on air, so that was interesting. <laughs> Uh, I'm, mine aren't on air, and we're not going to show you mine. But uh, Deshaun, come on, Dad, let's go, man. Gun show, uh, gun show. You want, you want to see these? Let me show you. Hey, let me see it. Bring them out, Zach. Oh, the gun yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I can work out for a long period of time. I can do a lot of cardio now, so that's cool. But um, that's definitely, good, you're doing good, good man. So good. Try man. Uh, every day is a is a fun venture. So appreciate you being with us today, Deshaun, Tim, as always. Um, Deshaun, any 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 last words before we we sign off? I mean, like I said, going back to man, you know, figure figure out your why. Like your why creates the how, and don't let what you cannot do stop you from what you can do, especially in this situation right here. Stop looking at the elephant in the room. Stop looking at what people are telling you, you can't do. The government said you can't do this. People said you can't do that. Stop looking at the elephant in the room, man, because you'll never come up with a solution because you're too busy focused on the problem, okay? So stop doing that, man. You got this. As long as you're alive, you can thrive. Let's make it happen. Zach, you the man, brother. I love that. I love you, my dude. Tell me. Always a pleasure seeing you, my friend. Yeah, Appreciate man. You, Appreciate love your time this, today. Deshaun, that was great. Love the words of wisdom. And uh, everyone follow Deshaun and Body by D online. And if you guys are interested in more help from the SBDC, head on over to startwheel.org slash weekly. And that page will show you how to do that. Deshaun, until next time, I'm out. Peace and pancakes. Tim, appreciate you. And uh, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta go work out. So uh, we'll, we'll chat later. Peace and pancakes. <laughs> I love you, man. Love and peace, man. Salute, man. Thank you. Great to see you guys. It was fun, Deshaun. As always, man, bless. Later. Later.